Hey math friends, today we are gonna bust through four beliefs you probably have about math manipulatives that simply aren't true. If you teach math in fourth or fifth grade, you probably fall into one of two camps. You either love math manipulatives or you hate them. Regardless of whether you love or hate manipulatives, you probably have some of these beliefs and it is time to finally debunk them. Now, before we start busting right through all of these beliefs, I want you to know to watch this video all the way through because at the very end, I have an amazing opportunity for you with a ton of freebies all about using math manipulatives in upper elementary. So be sure to stay until the end and you will be able to download that. So let's get started. Four beliefs that aren't true. Belief number four, we're gonna work backwards here. Belief number four is that math manipulatives are for lower grades. Now, I want you to take a second to think about why we actually use math manipulatives in lower grades. It's to build that foundational understanding of number concepts. Very few people would argue with me if I said that, of course, students need some type of concrete object in order to learn how to count. The reason for that is because counting and our number system is brand new to students in lower grades, so it makes sense. But my question for you is, why does this same type of logic not apply to fourth and fifth grade students? If you've ever taught fourth or fifth grade, you know that students are being introduced to brand new content, really big concepts that can be challenging for students and things that they've never experienced before. Think about operations with fractions and operations with decimal. So why is it any different than learning something new in first or second grade? The reason behind using math manipulatives has nothing to do with it's appropriate for certain concepts and not appropriate for other concepts. It is about the process our brains go through when we are learning something new. Students don't age out of best practices for learning. Now, of course, the tools we use with students may change from lower grades to upper grades, even to middle school or high school, but that doesn't mean the way that our brains work and the way that they learn changes at all. We still need to provide those concrete hands-on learning experiences in order to submit the learning into their brains. All right, belief number three, math manipulatives are simply a crutch for students. Now, this belief I actually think is pretty valid. And the reason for that is, is because it usually comes from a teacher who has seen the power of math manipulatives with their students. They've seen their students succeed and tackle these really tough concepts only to be faced with the frustration of taking the math manipulatives away and then seeing their students struggle. Let me first say, I see you math friend, I have been there. I have been through this struggle with students. And so we're faced with one of two options. We can either stop using math manipulatives because you know they can't use them forever and once you take them away, they're gonna struggle. Or we can focus in on how to transition them from the math manipulatives to just working through math without them. Let me let you in on a little secret that we are gonna dive into much deeper in a later video. If students struggle when you take the math manipulatives away, that is not the fault of the math manipulatives. That just means we need to focus on making those connections and being really intentional with how we transition students from the concrete tools to abstract algorithms or written methods. Now being on the other side and having spent time focusing on those connections and seeing students succeed without math manipulatives, I realized it was not the math manipulatives that were a crutch. I was essentially taking a tool that they had been successful with, ripping it away from them and having them start all over instead of using math manipulatives as a way to build their understanding towards the written methods that I was trying to get them to be able to do. Now let's remember, manipulatives are not there just to build an understanding of the algorithm. I used to think that was the only reason we used math manipulatives in the classroom, but it truly is about building the student's way of thinking, giving them an opportunity to visualize things. And that way of thinking, that ability to see math in a concrete way is going to impact their learning for years to come. So math manipulatives are not a crutch. If your students are struggling, that does not mean we just shouldn't give students math manipulatives because they struggle without them. Instead, we need to focus on making those connections. Are you ready for belief number two? This one's actually my favorite. Belief number two, math manipulatives are only for students who struggle. 
This belief could not be further from the truth. I absolutely love busting through this belief with teachers, and I usually do it with a fraction problem that includes pattern blocks. In just a second, I'm gonna show you a fraction problem, and I want you to pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Think about how this problem could really challenge your students who are a little bit more advanced in their learning. One of the main reasons I absolutely love math manipulatives is because they are such magical little tools if we know how to use them. They can both challenge students and support students at the very same time. So our students who are struggling with math, it gives them access to concepts that they wouldn't typically be able to access without these tools. And while it's doing that for those students, for our students who are a little bit more advanced in their learning, it can challenge them to think a whole lot deeper about these same math concepts. And lastly, our number one belief about math manipulatives that is so not true is that math manipulatives just aren't worth the time it takes to use them. I find there are two main reasons why teachers have this belief about math manipulatives in upper elementary. Many teachers believe that math manipulatives are only effective tools when you are using them in a teacher-led small group. So if you have a short math block, a 40, 50, 60 minute math block, and you don't have time for teacher-led small groups, I could see why you think that math manipulatives are not worth the time. This is like a myth within a myth. Math manipulatives can be used effectively outside of a teacher-led small group. In fact, Teacher-led small group time was really only accounted for maybe a fourth of all of the time that I used math manipulatives with students. And a fourth is being very generous. There are plenty of ways to use math manipulatives outside of that time and still get the maximum amount of learning from them. Now, the reason most teachers think that you can only use them in a teacher-led small group is because of the management side of things when it comes to math manipulatives. So when teachers tell me they're not worth the time, it's usually because they do not have really strong routines and structures in place for using math manipulatives with a larger group of students. Instead of isolating the use of math manipulatives to a teacher-led small group, or really just small groups in general, Let's think through and talk about how we can put those systems in place in the classroom that are both effective and fun for students so that you can use math manipulatives more frequently with your students. Now, I have a video coming out in just a couple of weeks about time-saving tips for using math manipulatives with upper elementary students, but if you are impatient, like me, and you do not want to wait for that video to be released, I have an amazing freebie for you. I just released an updated version of the Math Manipulatives in Upper Elementary email series. This email series is five days worth of tips, freebies, ideas, teaching strategies, everything you can think of for using math manipulatives effectively with your students in fourth or fifth grade. And one of those emails is specifically targeting the struggle of, I don't have time to use math manipulatives. And so I share with you my organization tips, my management tips, Teachers last summer, when we had the original version of this email series, absolutely loved it and were so blown away by some of those management tips. So I cannot wait to get the updated version in your hands. And by in your hands, I really mean in your inbox. So be sure to go to the link below, enter your email address, and then all these tips, freebies, ideas, strategies will be sent directly to your email address. Hopefully your limiting beliefs about math manipulatives in upper elementary have been completely shattered and you are getting excited about using manipulatives with your students this upcoming school year. If you want tons of new ideas and you wanna grow your confidence in using math manipulatives with your students in fourth or fifth grade, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel so that way you do not miss when any of my upcoming videos come out all about math manipulatives. And before you go, I would love for you to leave a comment in the comment box and let me know what questions you have about using math manipulatives. I'm actually gonna pull from those questions to answer during our live streams and then also in future videos. So do not be afraid to connect with me in the comments. All right, go sign up for that free email series and I cannot wait to talk math with you again soon.